Good morning, this is Tom from the UK Preppers Radio Network and I'd like to talk to you today about Ebola. Now I believe that we're facing one of the biggest threats to our survival with the outbreak of Ebola in West Africa. To me it appears that there is a total lack of quarantine in the area and there does seem to be a concerted effort to repatriate any citizen who contracts this disease. Ebola has not only crossed borders in Africa, and some reckon it could go as far as 15 different countries in Africa, but we now have cases in the USA, Spain, Sweden, Germany, and of course here in the UK. And I've just found out that in Italy, there are 40, that's four zero immigrants who are suspected also to be infected. The World Health Organization said on Tuesday that Europe would almost certainly see cases of Ebola after a nurse in Spain became the first known person to have caught the virus outside Africa. As many of those trying to enter the UK from Calais are actually from Africa and as we know our border is open and this and previous governments have an appalling record of preventing illegal access into the UK, I too firmly believe that we will see more cases here. The worrying thing is that these people, these cases will be under the radar, so to speak. Not forgetting unfettered travel being allowed to and from the infected areas, believe it or not, I think we have a recipe for disaster the like of which we have not in recent times seen before. So how does a person catch Ebola? Well, they usually acquire it with close contact with bodily or fluids and blood, and that means someone who perhaps coughs in your face. Or you handle a body, or you look after someone and you don't have ideal infection control methods. You get the virus on your hands, you touch your nose or your mouth and you have Ebola. Now the symptoms that you should look out for in yourself, God forbid, and or other people are simply, it does look like flu. There's a fever, a headache, a sore throat, muscle aches and pains. And that's in the first few days. But then vomiting, diarrhea and the really serious part of the illness, that is the hemorrhage part really doesn't occur until toward the end of the first week. So how do you protect yourself against Ebola? Well firstly, there is only one hospital in the UK with two beds. That's right, one hospital and two beds, isolation beds, that can deal with Ebola patients. So straight away we've got a disparity there between those seeking any form of medical attention and the ability to provide it. So it's up to you to prevent infection. If you must travel to an area that's affected by the 2014 Ebola outbreak, protect yourself by doing the following. Sanitise your environment and carry a hand sanitizer with you as well. The virus cannot survive disinfectants, direct sunlight and heat. You must wash your hands frequently or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with blood and bodily fluids of any person and please remember sweat is a bodily fluid and keep away from someone who is particularly in your opinion suffering from Ebola or appears to be sick. Do not handle items that may come in contact with an infected person's blood or bodily fluids. Do not touch the body of someone who has died of Ebola. Do not touch bats and non-human primates or their blood and fluids and do not eat raw meat prepared from these animals. Avoid hospitals in West Africa where Ebola patients are being treated. The US and UK embassies or their consulates are often able to provide advice on alternative medical facilities. Seek medical care immediately if you develop fever. 
that is classed as a temperature of or above 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which equates to 38.6 degrees Celsius. And any of the other following symptoms, headache, muscle pain, diarrhea, vomiting, stomach pain, or unexplained bruising or bleeding. Limit your contact with the people until you go to the doctor and when you go to the doctor. Do not travel anywhere else besides a healthcare facility. Understanding that our lives will change drastically if the population is faced with a pandemic and being prepared for this can help you make better choices towards the well-being of your family. Some of the changes we might see should we face a pandemic in the UK would immediately be shutdowns of business commerce, breakdown of our basic infrastructure communications, mass transport supply chains, which really means the supermarkets will not be replenished. Payroll service interruptions, you may not even get paid. Staff shortages in hospitals and medical clinics, because they too may be infected by Ebola. Interruptions in public facilities. Obviously schools, workplaces may close and public gatherings such as sporting events or worship services may close temporarily. We could even see government mandated, voluntary or involuntary home quarantine. Have you prepared? Are you ready? I have been saying for months that I believe the Ebola virus can be transmitted through the air. And there's solid evidence that the viral disease already went airborne as far back as 1989 when dozens of monkeys contracted Ebola through a ventilation system at a Virginia hospital. Even if I am wrong, why take the chance? I now carry a dust mask in my EDC just in case I feel it necessary to use. It's my choice. I'm not trying to cause panic. However, as a prepper, I have a responsibility to inform you of the facts. Explain the preventative measures I recommend and OK, yes, leave the ball in your court. Thank you for listening and I will be updating in the future.